Okay, shall we start? Yes, let's start. Hello yes. and welcome everybody. Uh, I hope everybody is feeling safe and healthy in these challenging times. And we are hoping that these webinars and our online live classes along with uh, online coaching and other services are helping you to feel connected to others and to the world. That's why we are doing this. So, today uh, we will be talking about uh, how online live classes can be grounding during crisis time. I am sure everybody would agree that, you know, we are going through um, very unusual uh, time. Everybody says unprecedented, but I don't know. I don't have words to describe uh, this time. Um, it is complete chaos, and I'm hoping that out of this, uh, we come up as you know um, the world um, with positive change, you know, and and positive transformation. Today, um, I have Tenson Glover, one of our core faculty members and mentor coach and professional certified coach with me. And um, Tamson is a great resource and a great friend and great colleague of mine. And we have been working together for some time now, Tommy. Aren't we? <laughs> yeah, a lot <laughs> of years. <laughs> yeah, a lot of years. So do you wanna say yeah. hi and maybe talk about yourself a little bit? Yeah. Hello. So formally, I'm Tamson, but I'm known as Tommy by most for most people. Um, and it's a delight to be here. Talia and I go way back. Um, and I'm just very happy to be part of Flow. Um, and we'll enjoy bringing some live examples uh, from current and recent classes um, as demonstration of of how online live classes can be really supportive right now. Um, I think some of my current and past students may be on this platform. Um, yes, and if so, and good. future students as well. <laughs> okay, let's hope so. Yeah. So it's um, for the ones that I'm finished with, I'm not really finished with, and I miss you. Um, so, hey, we can reconnect. Yes, yeah, this is a great medium. So we came up with this idea of offering this webinar in the cause of our students because um, both Tommy and I, we are uh, leading different uh, groups and different classes. So two weeks ago in um, one of our business coaching um, online uh, groups, few people uh, from United States, you know that, you know, uh, we all have it. It has its own challenges, but United States is really having a big time with uh, the virus right now. Two of them said that, you know, the, um, these classes, these online live classes, and uh, being able to practice coaching with others and connecting with people from around the world uh, has become their grounding space. And this uh, keeps them sane, like, you know, this really uh, gives them hope for the future and a reason to look forward to each week. So um, after we received such feedback, we decided that, you know, we should share um, this, um, this experience and also uh, inspire other coaches, facilitators, and, 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 and people uh, from the business world, and, and maybe, uh, you know, uh, independent uh, facilitators as well, to um, experience this platform. Tommy, do you have anything uh, to add? Or um, no, I think we should just uh, get on with it. I would uh, simply draw attention to all the letters under our names. The CMC um, says that I am a member of the Worldwide Organization of Management Consultants, um, and I've had a lot of 
um, experience in um, business and, and government primarily, and some in industry as well. Um, so I bring that um, to whatever coaching conversations we're having. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, thank you. So um, if you have specific questions regarding the extensions or like uh, of our titles, uh, we are happy to answer them <laughs> later on. <laughs> Last yeah. time we got a few uh, questions regarding this. But before we start, I wanna uh, summarize uh, what Flow Global Talks is about in case this is your first time. So um, Flow Coaching Institute is a global um, coaching certification education institute and we have coaches all around the world and uh, we started this webinar series free webinar series and um, just to be able to connect with our global community and so far um, it has been going very well and it gives us a medium to follow up and and connect with our community, global community. And I just want to um, give a heads up warning to everybody uh, because of the overload of the internet. If my connection somehow is unstable, I live in Toronto, um, but you know, you never know. Uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, move forward and we'll take over. And if something happens to top his connection i will take over so i just you know i uh, wanted to uh, give a warning if, in case it happens and i hope it doesn't happen so um this uh, webinar is live streamed uh, from facebook and instagram uh, in case um your connection doesn't go well if something happens you can follow us from facebook and instagram and watch this on our live stream okay Let's start. Um, uh, we wanted to start with understanding um, our, our brain, our emotional brain, and its relationship with our innate need to connect uh, to others um, and why social relationships are very important for um, us as human beings. Our, our emotional brain um, is as all those 50 million years old and uh, in humans it started to evolve um, during our transition to tribal times therefore for our emotional brain it is very important to belong to connect with others to be a member of a family of a team or community and uh, we share our emotional brain with other um, mammals, and that's why it's also called as mammalian brain or mammal brain as well. And um, our, our, our emotional brain really uh, wants to be with others, and it is part of our survival system, and, and it is responsible for the continuation of uh, our family, our team, our social connections, our belonging. And therefore, when there is an unexpected change or unwanted change, the reaction of our emotional brain is fight, flight, freeze. And when we have that uh, reaction, fight, flight, freeze response, uh, we don't think much, we just act. And, and when we just act without thinking, we all know, you know, what happens usually. And we are not at our best selves when we just have this, you know, fight, flight, freeze response because it's the fear response. So, um, only when our emotional brain relaxes and feels safe, then it starts to work with the upper parts of our brain, the more developed, uh, uh, the innovative parts of our brain. And therefore at the Flow Coaching Institute, uh, we developed a five-step positive model of coaching to 
be able to engage with all parts of our brain and support our emotional brain um, in those difficult times, in those crisis times, and help the emotional brain to move away from the survival response to a more you know, developed and complex and human response and to start thinking about uh, alternatives, possibilities, and to start thinking about uh, flow again and be creative again. So tell me, would you like to talk about our five yeah, model? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, can you hear the, me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. The thought that um, came to, to mind um, late last night was the way in which in the reptilian brain and the mammalian brain were very, very tribal. Um, and one of the things that we're seeing in our classes right now because of the Zoom connection that we can have is that kind of what I would simply call tribalism. Every class becomes its own little tribe. Um, and I get the wonderful blessing of being part of all these tribes. And I think that's one of the things that is generating the kinds of comments people are making about the, the deep satisfaction they're experiencing in doing the kind of work that we do together. Um, yes, the coaching process is designed to take us up to the neocortex to, to think about what our options might be. Um, and the support that is part of this, these little Zoom communities in all of our classes gives a, a, a safety um, and a resource, I think, for people. Yeah, I think as uh, coaches and um, also because of the positive model also that we use uh, at Flow, we know how to create that safe space. Mm. And when only our emotional brain only gets relaxed and feels safe uh, when there is such a space. Mm -hmm. when it feels safe. So I'm glad that you um, brought it for me because it's so important. And I like uh, the definition of tribal experience for our <laughs> <laughs> learning process. That's so nice. I haven't thought about it before, indeed. Yeah. Um, so do you want to, um, Tommy, do you want to talk about the five-step uh, model, like very briefly here? Uh, so that, you know, um, our community understands how it supports uh, the brain systems. Okay. And how it engages. Sure, sure. So um, it would be possible even uh, to see someone sitting in their reptilian brain. I know how fast I can go there. Um, and, and I think of a little reptile going, ka um, <laughs> And that will take me to, to fear, anxiety, horror, want to run away. Um, in a big hurry. And the coaching process we use, and for anybody that's um, on our platform this morning and knows this, we, we start with helping our clients identify uh, what it is they want to create in their lives. So in times like this, it's not surprising um, that many people want to create um, safety, uh, positivity, all those kinds of things. Some, and some of the things that they want, we can't even access right now, given the state of the world. Um, but what we can do is to help people talk about why exactly, as much as exactly can be these days, um, that's important to them. So if somebody wants um, a process or, a, or a, a sense of ability to communicate in their family where the anxiety level is really high or the kids are running around um, because they're all home from school um, and, and somebody says, I just, I just need some peace to be able to think. What our process does is explore, all right, what would that look like? What would that feel like? What are the options you have to create that? Um, and 
really emphasize the sense of of possible peace of mind um, so that that becomes an impetus to creating even a small amount of change that could make a difference. Um, and so th that starts um, people experiencing the potential resources they have um, to the point that then we can say, and we do a lot with visualization, um, and so what would it feel like to have um, less chaos um, at home? Um, and all right, so if that's what it would feel like, um, quieter, you could think, uh, maybe you'd sleep better at night. Um, what are your options? Actually do something to start to make that happen. And so we help people find the resources that they have. When we get stuck in this fight or flight place of the reptilian brain, we're right out of touch with the resources that we have. Um, and our process helps people get creative about, you know, so what's one thing that you could do that might lower the, what feels like the chaos of your and home experience at the moment. I am so glad my kids are grown up and gone. I wouldn't want to have to deal with this. Um, anyway, so what can you do? Um, and the, ideas that people come up with, um, particularly if we're having that kind of conversation in a class, because all these other people are helping generate ideas, but we get a sense of where we could possibly go here, and then what, what do we actually have the ability to do, and it may only be one thing, but when life is the way it is at the moment, even doing one thing, can make a difference. Um, and okay, so there's the one thing you can do. How can you commit to doing that? How can you support yourself in staying on track? Um, if it's somebody that's part of a class, how can this group help you stay on track and make a difference in your life? So we start with the current experience, the desired experience, the resources that somebody has, the action steps they can take, and it may only be one thing, but one thing can make a difference. And then we Thank go from Thank you very much. That was a very, very good summary. And you know, when um, our, our brain is stressed and as, as I said, like, you know, we are not at, you know, our, um, we are not our best version of ourselves. And our initial response to unplanned, unwanted, and unexpected change, usually the, the subconscious response, you know, the survival response is um, move from shock to denial, and then to frustration. And hopefully uh, just, you know, um, bypass depression and uh, with intervention and awareness, just starts um, start to think about the meaning of that experience and and start to engage with that new situation that came up as a result of um, the change that we didn't ask for and so what happens is um, with um, coaching and these you know online live classes is that they work as an intervention so um, just suppose that, you know, um, some people um, perceive this social distancing and isolation time as a high challenge and they swing between anxiety to boredom, from boredom to anxiety without, um, ha without having the sense of control. And if that, you know, um, situation, if that state of boredom and anxiety continues, uh, usually depression comes or other, you know, diseases come. So um, when only we are aware and when only uh, we accept the situation, 
start to organize and then we are able to make something different towards creating our own flow zone, our own flow channel that is meaningful for us. And um, I would like to ask you, Tommy, about different personalities and how, you know, uh, we react and respond um, to social isolation and social distancing, depending on our personality. Okay. Thanks, Talia. Um, the, the, the basic distinction, I think, is the extent to which we're either introverted or extroverted. Um, and introverted people are probably experiencing this time of isolation um, with considerably less stress. Um, I'm an introvert. I'm quite happy in my own company. Um, and yeah, I'm missing people, but I can talk to them on the phone. I don't, I don't need a whole lot of interaction. My beloved husband, on the other hand, is much more extroverted. Um, and it's getting to him. <laughs> And when it does, I say, go work in the garden. Um, because one of the things that we know is that given our personalities, the way in which we cope um, can be intentional. This flow channel that we talk about that's at the heart of, of the whole, all the flow models um, is a place where we're doing something that we really enjoy for its own sake. And we get into that and uh, time can just fly. Um, what we also know is that there's a, a good relationship, a very powerful relationship between our experience of flow and um, skill development. So where the personality piece comes into this, um, uh, use myself as an example, um, yes, I'm an introvert, and I have a very high need to make stuff happen. Um, I'll go and find something to make it happen if necessary. Um, and, and so one of the things that I've done for myself in this time of uncertainty, and we're in lockdown on Main Island, and heaven knows uh, that's going to be the case till at least the end of May. Um, so how do I... How do I keep myself from getting bored? Well, I have a golf practice map outside. Um, and every day I give myself the gift of a half an hour of time um, and I go practice my golf swing. The problem about that is, is the swing's getting better and the balls are going further and that means they're going into the neighbor's yard behind me. And thankfully their house is up at the top of a hill. So I'm not gonna break their windows, but I do have to scramble around and find the lost balls. Um, people who are very relationship oriented, and that's a whole personality type, are finding this kind of time very, very stressful um, because they can't connect. Um, people who are very thinking oriented um, in the Myers-Briggs world or the personal styles world um, will think and think and think about all of this. Um, and I had to really laugh when my daughter told me that her biological father, um, who I know well, because I was married to him for 14 years, has taken to making spreadsheets of the um, infection patterns around the world. <laughs> now, when, I, when she told me that, after I stopped laughing and said, yep, I can just see that, but what's that doing to his state of mind? And she said, well, he doesn't think about that. I said, it's got to be raising his anxiety. She said, oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so we find our ways of doing things. The more aware we become of, of our own personal needs and, and sort of orientations, we can use a chart like this or use the previous one, the Kubler-Ross one, in a creative way. I think some of the people that are really finding this difficult are people who are highly, highly expressive and creative. Um, and how can they express their creativity in a time like this? On the other hand, I have a friend here on Maine who's an amazing painter. And she offered an online painting class and she's got 25 people enrolled. It happened just in a week. 
Um, and when this is all over, God knows when, she intends to have an art exhibit for the people that participated to um, show their work. And all this is to say, we're not in a sea of, of no resources. Um, and I think one of the things that we do as coaches is understand as much as we possibly can generally about the way our mammalian and neocortex work, uh, where our anxiety sits, where our fight or flight stuff sits, and help ourselves and our clients um, not fall into the boredom place or the anxiety place and to discover their own resources. Mm -hmm. And I want to add to that. Um, so as, as you know, humans, um, we want to feel that uh, our, our, who we are makes sense, you know, and, and um, our life and our actions um, has a meaning, you know, uh, subconsciously, not always. Not, we don't think about those big uh, concepts all the time, of course, but um, to be able to keep hoping mm. about our future in the present time, we need to be content with the meaning that we are generating. And this doesn't happen when we are in the anxiety zone or boredom zone. We feel like um, the things around us and on our actions or situation, whatever it is, uh, they lost their meaning. So um, the way to change that is really to focus on what we can control in this time and what we can control in this time is that the reality is that we are all, you know, isolating ourselves and uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, <laughs> distancing ourselves. So this is what we can control. And, and even within this, you know, um, and their, their coaching is very powerful, uh, we can shift our perspective towards our next question which is, who do we choose to be at the time of this crisis? So Talia, the, the other aspect of, of sort of human personality is, is what we call the glass half empty or the glass half full. Um, and I know that, that there are times when, according to my husband, um, I'm sitting in the glass half empty place um, and I'm the only person who can make a shift. What I know, though, as a coach, is you quickly de can tell whether people are glass half empty or glass half full. And the opportunity there is to help somebody, because in the glass half empty place, we feel quite desperate. There isn't anything I can do. Well, that's not true. There's always something we can do. Um, and, and so working with our clients, you know, what's one thing that you could do that would make you feel better? Um, and that starts to make a shift. So we have a choice about who we want to be and need to be in this time. Mm -hmm. I love this creature. Uh, um, yeah and, and I think this would be a good time to tell my my story um, about one of our graduates who I think is on the call this morning um, she was part of a very small coaching group a class that became deeply deeply bonded with one another um, they were amazing. I miss them terribly because they're all graduated now, out in the world doing wonderful coaching. We were in class just at the time that her community uh, was forced into social isolation on the Eastern, in the Eastern US. And one of the things that was really important to her was her yoga practice and her yoga classes. And she had an elderly neighbor I mean, elderly, late 80s, 
I think she was that old, um, who went to yoga with her and was really distressed that she couldn't go anymore. And it was as much the community as, that she was going to miss as the actual practice. Um, and what was really encouraging was to see this group of people who had worked together long enough that they suddenly became one coaching body um, and explored with her, well, so you've got no control over the social isolation. You've got no control over the fact that your class has had to stop. And so this elderly woman is, is there. What could she have control over? And who could she choose to be rather than a solitary victim in this situation? Um, who could you choose to be as a support to her? And in the course of about mm, 20 minutes, this group of by now pretty skilled coaches had arrived at a plan where and I would toss in, because I've been a yoga teacher, I would toss in some ideas here, um, where the, the woman could do some things on her own with particular yoga postures that would not only strengthen her body, but strengthen her, her heart and her mind. Mm -hmm. um, and there was the, the ticket, so to speak. And, and I said, one of my yoga teachers would say, choose a posture that you find really challenging and do it every day. So that's what I offered to the student. Who, and I said, think of a posture. Uh, and we thought about postures that would um, support her strength and her stability because that's what she needed. She was all by herself. And who knew how long she was going to be all by herself. Yeah. Um, so there was this wonderful insight not only about her but about all of us that we can choose who we want to be and need to be um, and find a way to do that mm -hmm. and and i want to be um like compassionate here also that sometimes is not that easy you know especially when the, you know, worrying uh, part and the triggering, like, you know, um, all, you know, constant triggering from media is too much. So I suggest that this is a good time for experimenting some group coaching. Um, would you agree, Tommy? Like, oh, yes. Okay. So um, let's um, work together and, and use this time, this space for, um, reflecting together and let's answer this big question um, on your own and then please you know type in the chat box if you have some insight or ideas that are coming to you so the question is who do you choose to be at this time who do you choose to be at this time emotionally, mentally, spiritually, resourcefully, who do you choose to be at this time? If you have any insights, any ideas, you know, please feel free to type. That's a big question. Creative person to find new ways of doing things. We have got one answer. Thank you, Ashna. A mindfulness agent. Wow. That's great. Thank you, Eli. What else? How would you sorry? I know Rob um, is on Rob Hedham is on this call because I saw his name in the chat box. Um, 
and he's in a very challenging place in South Africa. Oh, here's Muhammad. Hope and support for others. I like that. So, uh, yeah, another perspective or asking the same question is like, how would you choose to position yourself in this time? And I like that, you know, Eli positioned himself, himself as an agent and Muhammad hope and support for others. David, accentuating an already positive affirming lifestyle such as meditating twice daily instead of once. Wow, that's big. Thank you, David. And Rob also has an answer. Realistic and optimistic then, yes. You, you know, then in positive psychology, in, in our uh, program, we speak about grounded optimism. Because one of the three pillars of positive psychology is having optimism for the future. And at flow, we say grounded optimism, not only optimism. <laughs> I choose to use this time to get close to myself and understand the message of the universe. Wow, that's big, Heba. Thank you. And Halil, Sadhguru, and Wim Hof. That's great. Thank you. And self growth and learning. Thank you. I really would like to encourage everybody. And, and it looks like everybody is already very mindful and conscious about how they position themselves in this time it's a big thing and i like that you position yourself as like you know agents um and 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 i would say as a resource for your communities that's big you know thank you for doing that and fred said i choose to be happy i've been busy doing projects around the house i have had time to practice mindfulness that's so that's an opportunity. I mean, same, same for me. I, although I work very long hours, even work longer than the usual times nowadays, um, being in the same house with my family, really, I mean, I feel so uh, lucky. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm aware of the bigger reality and the crisis, but um, I choose to feel the happiness and joy to be with my family when I am in the moment. That's, that's what I can influence right now. So Talia, one of yeah. the things that um, has come up in, in classes, which is really interesting and speaks to this, is a number of people um, whose identity has been deeply um, shaped by the work they do and they go out to the office and they do whatever they do there. And now they can't do that. Um, and for some people that creates almost an identity crisis. And the coaching opportunity here is we've got a way of looking at our whole lives. Um, we call it a life wheel. And it, our lives have various parts to them because we're all a system. Um, and what, the feedback that um, I'm getting certainly is that by helping people whose identity has been entirely focused in one area that's been cut off from them, um, to see the opportunity, just as you were describing it, Talia, of, so I'm stuck at home working. Um, I'm sick to death of being on the phone and teleconference and Zoom and da 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 da, and I can't get out. And my family's here. So what opportunity might that represent for you or this position for you? And I suggested a question. No, we're not supposed to suggest things as coaches, but I did suggest this question because <laughs> um, I've used it successfully. And that is, although uh, let's, let's just fast forward. It's oh, 10 years from now, and as a family, you're talking about this time. Oh, remember when? What would you like to hear? This, this person had two boys. What would you like to hear your boys say about this time, 
of social isolation and lockdown. And that shifted the whole conversation completely mm. because of the opportunity. Said, so if I'm one of your boys and I might look back and say, you know what I remember that we, I really like? So we had that enormous jigsaw puzzle. Mom got pretty upset because we had it spread all over the dining room table. But we worked on it every day. We worked on that puzzle. And it took a lot of time. And it was a wonderful activity together. And so who we choose to be can be creative and positive or, because it is a choice, we can go to that fearful place, and we'll all go to the fearful place um, at times. Can't help it. Um, but we do have a choice. Yeah. Thank you. I love jigsaw puzzles, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> One of our favorite family activities. <laughs> Well, go go find it. Oh, you can't go. Oh, you sure could order it online. Amazon will deliver anything. We did, we did order it online. A lot of puzzles. <laughs> and I want to read like um, a few more um, responses here from Berna, for example. Uh, and, and David said like, you know, um, he is accepting uh, strangers, you know, Facebook uh, friends request before he uh, was very selective. And now he accepts. And Bernard says he, she chooses to be a Sufi for her family and be an example for uh, them as a person who promotes growth. And Rob says he's going to take this opportunity to reach out to anyone who has the time or would like to donate some time to practice coaching to connect, connect with him on a social project. He's working on in the tourism industry starting in South Africa. Rob, if you need uh, more coaches, um, as long as it is online, we can open this to our community. And we have a few other coaches in South Africa too. So if you need help, please just let us know. So what we are, uh, what we are, um, my pleasure, what we are trying to say here, we are not just trying to paint a pink, like, you know, over optimistic mm. picture, but we are just trying to say, we are just trying to emphasize that, you know, we all need to be resourceful at this time. And uh, so, um, I mean, the fact is that, you know, we are all um, in, mostly and hopefully in our, you know, homes and uh, just looking around, and asking this question to ourselves, like what resources do I have under these circumstances in order to engage in and create maybe meaningful social interactions through this crisis? And now we already have got beautiful answers, powerful answers. So, um, Tommy, I remember that you were going to uh, mention uh, about an example. Maybe you already did. I don't remember. Maybe already did with one of the students. But, yes, that was yeah. the conversation about the elderly woman. Yeah, I've got lots of others. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's great. So um, the, um, a lot of people um, are taking online courses and, and, and tele classes and, you know, and um, I, I want to say something here. Um, we realize that uh, when we uh, reach out to our community and, and our corporate clients and our coaches, we realize that, you know, especially in the corporate world, online learning is perceived as like um, only just, you know, uh, either email learning or just tele classes and um, indeed uh, as you already um, experienced some of you in our uh, live classes it's totally a different experience uh, what we offer um, at flow is um, an opportunity to develop face-to-face -face relationships so um, we have, um, and, and we strongly recommend and encourage our participants to open their camera 
uh, so that they see each other. They develop really a deep connection with the facilitator uh, teaching the course and their mentor. And uh, there is a chat box and they can add, type their questions. They can engage with each other open like publicly or privately. And there are live practice rooms. So the concept of online classes has changed thanks to Zoom uh, and GoToMeeting and other, you know, platforms and the facilitation skills uh, that are required in, during these online live classes is, is very different than facilitation skills um, of like, you know, teaching in person in a classroom setting, like physical setting. So uh, if you have any questions here uh, for Tommy and myself regarding um, these online live classes, we are happy to answer. But um, just think about it. Like, you know, you are at your home and, and you have a goal of uh, learning a new skill and uh, you meet like-minded people and these people can be a global community or in your neighborhood. And, and you are able to develop face-to-face -face relationships and even lifetime friendships. How big is that? So Talia, let me jump in if I may. One of the, thing, one of the um, things that I heard from a student just last week um, it's an, a new group, so we're about to have our fifth class tomorrow. Um, and she said that one of the things that she was experiencing enormous value from was this um, live online connection um, and therefore relationships that she was developing um, with the people in the class. And for whatever reason, um, I find this absolutely fascinating. The universe has a hand in this. Um, most of the people in that class all live within probably 20 miles of one another. I don't ask me how that is in kilometers, no idea. Um, and that means that they can build another relationship just by getting on the phone with one another. But she said, she couldn't be doing this at a better time because she actually had the time to do it. Um, and it was creating in her a future vision for herself um, that was really positive. I will complete this course. I will have all this coaching practice and I will be moving towards a goal that I have in terms of bringing coaching into the other business things in which she's involved. Um, and, and she said, there are so many things that are of real value and a whole lot of it has to do with the way it's an online experience, interpersonal experience. Uh, we connect um, quite deeply. Uh, they can see each other. I can see them. Not, not all at once, but four at a time. Um, and it, I think it goes a very long way to compensating for the absence of, of the usual connections that we have with the people we care about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I just want to tell a story here, you know, as a therapist and psychologist and a professional coach, when I started my um, practice, this many years ago now, um, as a therapist first and as a coach, my sessions were in person. And then I moved to Vancouver and I started to work with children and all of my sessions still were in person uh, because I worked in a school and uh, in some charity organizations. Then uh, I started to um, get clients and inquiries from different parts of the world. And I resisted to not to have <laughs> online sessions like, you know, and I didn't believe that, you know, online therapy was, you know, possible or online coaching sessions. And I really resisted for about like three to four months. Uh, then, you know, I was in that curve of like denial, 
you know, <laughs> denial of my situation. And only after I decided to take one small, tiny step and just to give it a try and be open-minded and experience uh, like 30 minute uh, coaching session, then I realized that, wow, this, this can work. And this was many years ago now. So, so many people out there I know and I know some of them personally still resist to this new world. Uh, but um, this is still about connecting with others without touching them, like without hugging them. The, the kinesthetic experience is not there. The tactile experience is not there in terms of connecting, but the visual, auditory, and, and vocal uh, connection uh, and, and emotional connection and mental connection is still there. So, um, and, and in this group, I'm sure there are a lot of, you know, people who are very open-minded, but in case you know people that resist uh, some, you know, managers or, you know, other people who are resisting for like, you know, learning online or coaching online or getting the service online, this is just what you can explain to them. Like this is still an experience without the textile, uh, sorry, tactile, the kinesthetic part of it. Yeah. So well, Talia, if, if somebody needs to be convinced that this is really does work, um, they could try what we did uh, a week ago. We have a couple who are very, very dear friends um, who are on the mainland um, and heaven knows when we'll actually be able to be together again they have a place here on the island but it's a recreational property so they can't come here right now um and we came up with the idea well what if we had happy hour on zoom so that's what we did we we agreed that at five o'clock on a particular day we would have our usual happy hour conversation um, on Zoom. And so we set that up and there were Janet and Ernie sitting with their glasses of whiskey um, and John and I with a glass of wine. And we had the most wonderful conversation for about an hour. And we said, fine, we're going to do this regularly. Um, I don't know whether Zoom would like that story. Like They don't need any marketing right now. They're, they're yeah, all, they, yeah. More marketing. If they did, that would be, that would be a good story. <laughs> <laughs> with the you know overload of online interactions and, and, and talia um because rob is on the call um in the final class that, and that was a winter intensive group and they met four days a week so we sort of lived in each other's lives for a whole month and when that was over it, there was real celebration so rob lives in south africa where I know that they make glorious wine. And I said at the, the end of the previous class, well, the day before, um, I wish that I could give champagne to everybody tomorrow as we celebrate the completion of what has been a really absorbing and rigorous process. So Rob, the end of that class, Rob holds up a glass of sparkling wine um, to toast to everybody. And I said, well, that just makes me thirsty, Rob. Um, but it was a great idea. Thank you, Rob. And now he wants us to come to South Africa so we can drink the stuff. Um, we won't be going there anytime soon. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully one day. So um, before, um, towards the end, like, you know, we will have a Q&A session at the end. Um, I just want to um, talk about very briefly um, about the upcoming uh, ICF uh, certification programs that we have. Uh, in just 10 days, uh, not even 10 days, six days now, almost like, sorry, eight days. Eight days, uh, we have a new um, IC core foundations program starting. Uh, which will be not a 6 a.m. from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm teaching so, that. I don't want to teach from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> no, living in the West Coast, no, we don't want that for you. So it's from no, no. 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then uh, on April 25th, we have business coaching ICF certification 
uh, again, uh, that is from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time again. And then on June 13, we have an advanced coaching certification module six starting which is the ICF ACTP track. And if you don't know what ICF ACTP, ICF ACTP is the all inclusive certification track that, uh, that is the, I would say highest level of certification in the world of professional coaching. And uh, anything that you wanna add here, Tommy, before I move on? No, I think uh, since we drew attention to the fact that it's 6 p.m., not, not a.m., um, yeah. And uh, if you're considering uh, participating in one of these programs and you would like to connect with any of the people that are currently engaged in a program or are graduates of a program, we're happy to. Um, give you that connection um, and you can talk to them about their experience. Thank you. So um, we also want to just, you know, give uh, brief information about uh, something that we will initiate um, in a month. Uh, Tommy, would you like to summarize this or do you want me to talk about it? Um, well, since it's sort of my baby, I guess I, why don't you start? I need to find my notes. Yes, okay. So, um, we, um, because of the time, like this time, uh, we wanted to give support, give a hand to our community. And we are going to um, start group coaching sessions with a theme of emotional resilience during the pandemic and beyond. And with Tamsin Glover, Tommy, you know, you know her as Tommy. So with Tommy Glover, and there will be weekly one hour sessions starting um, May 1st, uh, which is, I think, Friday, and uh, six sessions in total. So six hours of group coaching in total. So if you are interested in participating in those group coaching sessions, please send an email to info at flowcoachinginstitute.com or you can call us at our toll free number or uh, from the office. Uh, I will share our contact details soon. So these and, group coaching sessions, yes, do you want to? Um, and and um, feel free to send me an email, tommy at flowcoachinginstitute.com. Um, the, the basis of this is I have worked in the field of emotional intelligence for many years. Um, first of all, through learning in action. And, and um, in that work, there is a lot of focus on the self-understanding that can generate um, greater emotional resilience um, at, and under any circumstances and the application of that to the situation that we're in and to coach together um, to support people in building um, more conscious emotional resilience um, and to get the support of other people because this won't be a large class. I think we've said maximum eight people, haven't we, Talia? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, so that allows for um, a depth of relationship and support as together we explore um, how we react individually and the options that are available to us and support one another in living into those options. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if you would like to participate, this will be offered at a very, very, very low rate because we really want to contribute our community. And um, so if you want to participate and, and just join as a, like to benefit from these sessions, please reach out to us and we will give you uh, more information. And um, I want to also add something. Um, as of today, um, 
so we have, you know, in Toronto, we uh, have been offering expressive arts coaching certification programs as part of the Create Institute, which is the uh, Expressive Arts Psychotherapy Institute. And because of the pandemic, we are not able to offer those courses, you know, in person anymore. So we worked, we have been working indeed um, in transforming them into um, and being able to offer them to a wider community globally. Um, and we did it indeed, that's good news. So um, in the summer, we will be able to offer expressive arts uh, ICF Continuing Coaching Education Unit Certification Programs, eight months, sorry, eight weeks in total, two months, and we will be able to give 24 ICF Continuing Coaching Education Units. Since we just finalized the details of it this morning with our um, team, I wasn't able to add this uh, at the Express Wars program into the slides, but if you are interested, in uh, learning about uh, creative modalities and using arts as part of your coaching sessions as an art therapist and expressive arts facilitator, I am happy to explain how it works and you know um, why it is very useful. So um, let's move on and um, we have like we have exceeded our time for two minutes uh, but we have like you know tommy and i are here in case you have questions for us and if you want to leave we understand so if you have any questions please type your questions in the chat box rob pick me pick me <laughs> There is workshop for the coach. Heba, yes, there is. Um, and please just shoot an email to me, Heba. Okay, yeah, we'll talk, Heba. We will talk. And um, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box. We're here for a few more minutes. Um, I noticed that, that Rob, um, uh, draws attention to the fairly vast number of courses available on Udemy. Um, I've looked at, at a couple of those. I find them personally um, rather canned. Um, and, and he says that they're offering uh, free courses at this point. Um, we're not offering the, the Developing Resilience program free but it might as well be free because we're offering it at a very low price. So yes. it's our, our contribution. Yes. Okay, um, thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Noor. Thank you, Fred, for being with us today. So thank you all for being with us today. And I hope uh, this webinar has been useful and inspiring for you. We will continue to have these webinars. Uh, thank you, Moira. And um, in May, we will offer a new one and, and others as well. So please um, keep an eye on our social media um, and also read our emails. <laughs> because sometimes, we get like, you know, um, inquiries from our students that like, you know, is there a webinar? And it's just a day after we send the email, we say like, we please read our emails. <laughs> okay, have a great day, everybody. And, and thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Rob. Highly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.